In this tutorial, we are going to use uh, the branch and bound method to solve uh, the integer programming problem. Maximize z is equals to 5x1 plus 4x2 subject to 3x1 plus 2x2 greater than or equals to 5, 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equals to 7, x1 and x2 greater than or equals to 0, and uh, they are integer. To solve uh, this problem, uh, we are going to use uh, the graphical method. So I'll start by looking at uh, that constraint there and uh, draw the line that uh, represent uh, that constraint. So I'll draw the horizontal axis and I'll label the zero there and an x1, the vertical axis, label it x2, and the intersects of uh, and that uh, line there are 5 over 2 and uh, 5 over 3. And I join them to draw the line. And then uh, I move on to the second constraint 2x1 plus 3x2 less than or equals to 7. The intersect there 7 over 3 and 7 over 2. And then I join those two. And then after that, we find the feasible region and the region that satisfies all the constraints. And that region, I will shade it there, the one that I've indicated on the graph. That's uh, the feasible region. The next part is uh, to evaluate uh, the objective function at the corner points of uh, the feasible region. I will label the corner points A, B, and uh, C. I will draw a table, and we have a point, then uh, the x1 coordinate, the x2 coordinate then the z then at point a to get the coordinates of point a we solve uh, those uh, two simultaneously so that we get the coordinates of x1 and x2 at a and when you solve uh, those uh, two simultaneously what we get is um, x1 is equals to 1 over 5 x2 is equals to 11 over 5 and uh, when we evaluate uh, the objective function at uh, these coordinates, get that uh, z is equals to 49 over 5. At uh, point B, we have uh, x1 is 5 over 3, x2 is a 0. If we substitute this into the objective function, we get that our z will be equals to 25 over 3. At point number C, we have x1 is equals to 7 over 2 and x2 is equals to 0. And uh, if we substitute uh, 7 over 2 for x1 and uh, 0 for x2 in the objective function set there, we get that uh, set is equals to 35 divided by 2. This is a maximization problem. We therefore look for the maximum set there, and we see that uh, the largest set there is uh, 35 over 2. And uh, we are having the optimal solution is z is equals to 35 over 2, which occurs when x1 is equals to 7 over 2 and uh, x2 is equals to 0. This uh, solution is uh, not integral just because we are having x1 there is not an integer. But for this problem, we are requiring integer values of x1 and x2. The branch and bound method says that if uh, the variables there, they are not integer, we have to exclude the region using that formula there. And in this case, the variable that we are looking at, uh, which we call our xj, is uh, the variable x1, because it is the one which is not an integer. So if we are looking at x1, is equals to 7 over 2. So that will be our x star there in that expression. We'll be taking the flow value of x1 is 3, and then the flow value of x1 plus 1 will give us a 4. So we will be in excluding the region between 3 and 4. And uh, I will write uh, the 3 there on the horizontal axis and draw the line x1 equals to 3, and label a 4 there on the graph, and uh, draw the line x1 equals to 4. We therefore have to exclude the region between 3 and 4. 
And when you exclude the region between three and four, what you are saying is from that vegetable region which is shaded, we are excluding anything which is between three and four. And when we do that, what we get is uh, a new feasible region there that I've shaded since we have excluded the region between 3 and 4. We are excluding the region between 3 and 4, but we are not excluding the points which are lying on the line x1 equals to 3 there. The corner points of the feasible region will therefore be the A there and B and the C there. Both C will be lying on the line x1 equals to 3 and the D, which is lying again on the line x1 equals to 3. We then go on and evaluate the objective function at the corner points of the feasible region that I have indicated there. We will have the point of the x1, the x2, and then evaluate set. At point A, we are having x1 is equals to 1 over 5, which is the same that we have before x2 is 11 over 5 and set is equals to 49 over 5. This is just both this, the same point A that we have been dealing with. At point B, we are having x1 is equals to 5 over 3 and x2 is equals to 0. Our set will be equals to 25 over 3. At point C, x1 is equals to 3 and x2 is equals to 0. And when you evaluate the objective function at uh, these points, we get that uh, set is equal to 15. At point D, x1 is equal to 3. To get x2 is uh, the intersection of uh, the line x1 equals to 3 and uh, the second constraint. So that intersection there is a 1 over 3. So our x2 is 1 over 3. And if we evaluate the objective function at uh, that point there, we get that uh, z is equals to 49 over 3. And uh, this is a maximization problem. We look at uh, the maximum value of z. The maximum value of z is uh, 49 over 3. The optimal solution is uh, z is equals to 49 over 3, which occurs when x1 equals to 3 and uh, x2 equals to 1 over 3. In this case, again, we are having that uh, the solution is not integral since uh, the value of uh, x2 there is uh, not an integer. And uh, if it's not an integer, the branch and bound method says that we should remove that part with uh, the variable where it's uh, not an integer using that expression as before. But in this case now, our xj is now x2, because it is the one which is uh, not an uh, integer. Look at the flow of value, x2, the flow of value of 1 over 3 is a 0. Our x2 should be greater than the flow of value of x2, but less than the flow of value of x2 plus 1. We will have that uh, x2 lying between 0 and 1 we exclude that region of x2 between 0 and 1. On the graph there, I will indicate the 1 on uh, the vertical axis and draw the line x2 equals to 1. We are going to exclude the region between 0 and 1. And uh, when we exclude that, the feasible region that we would have left is uh, the 1 that I have uh, indicated there. And uh, what you should notice, we are excluding the region between 0 and 1, but we are not excluding the points which are lying on the line x2 equals to 1 and uh, the line x2 equals to 0. Therefore, our visible region would have the corner points A there and a B and a C. And in addition to that, we have the points there T and E. They were in the previous visible region, but uh, in this one they are also there since we only excluded uh, points which are between 0 and 1, but we are not excluding points which lie on x2 equals to 1 or x2 equals to 0. That's why I have uh, included those points there, T and E. The next step now is to evaluate the objective function at the corner points. 
of the visible region that I have indicated there, we will have the point and x1, x2, and uh, the objective function at the point A is the same point A that I've been dealing with before. It's a uh, 1 over 5 for x1 and 11 over 5 for x2. And if we evaluate set at uh, both points, we have uh, 49 over 5. At point B, what we are having is uh, x2 is the one which is 1, because B is lying on the line x2 equals to 1. And uh, point B is the intersection of uh, the first constraint there and the line x2 equals to 1. And uh, if we find that intersection, we will get it to be a 1. And if we evaluate the objective function at uh, that point B, it will give us a 9, because it will be 5 plus 4. At point C, we are having x2 is equal to 1. To get the point uh, x1 now, x1 at C there is the intersection of the line x2 equals to 1 and uh, the second constraint there. And when we solve for that, we get that uh, x1 is equal to 2. And when you evaluate the objective function at that point, we get that set is equal to 4. At point T, we are having x1 is equal to 5 over 3 and x2 is equal to 0. The objective function there will be 25 over 3. Point E, x1 is equal to 3, x2 is a 0. And when you evaluate the objective function at that point, we get that our set is equal to 50. And uh, we are having a maximization problem. So we look at the largest value of set. The largest value of set there is a 15. We therefore write the optimal solution is z is equal to 15, which occurs when x1 equals to 3 and x2 equals to 0. We now have the integer values for x1 and x2, and therefore we have found the solution of the integer programming problem which we were given at the beginning there. So the solution of the integer programming problem is z is equal to 15, x1 equals to 3, and x2 equals to 0.